Good evening. Today is Friday, 22nd of November, 1996. This is Radio Kujirat, Nigeria, the voice of democracy. The broadcast on 6205 kilohertz on the 49 meter band shortwave from 5 minutes past 8 o'clock in the evening. I am Idris Mohammed. In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the history of an invisible but powerful radio station which became a turn on the flesh of the military government of General Sani Abacha, the then military head of Nigeria. The radio station was sponsored by Nigerian citizens who fled the country at the time and lived abroad for fear of their lives, but who were determined to continue the agitation for an end to military rule in Nigeria and for the actualization of the June 12th mandate of MK Abiola. Abaja was uncomfortable with the activities of the radio station, but the station was way beyond his reach, as it is said to have been located in Norway. Abaja felt insulted and offended by the activities of the radio station, but he had no option but to live with the invisible presence of the radio. The name of the radio station was Radio Kudirat. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. In June 1993, Nigerians woke up to the news that the election which held across the country and which MK Abiola won in majority of the states of the Federation had been annulled by the military administration of General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida. The military gave reasons to justify the cancellation of the election, but none of the reasons was seen by the Nigerian populace and the international community to be good enough to justify the cancellation of an election that was widely acclaimed to have been free, fair, and credible. From that moment on, Nigeria was never going to be the same again. There were protests everywhere and agitation for the military to rescind its decision and allow the official announcement of MK Abiola as a winner of the election. The military did not blink its eyes, but the agitation did not stop. It continued and increased by the day and even expanded abroad. Babangida was uncomfortable and at some point he must have seen that things had really fallen apart and that the center could no longer hold. Babangida then stepped aside and handed over the reins of power to Ernest Shonekon as interim president of Nigeria. Shonekon was to be in power for a short while and see to the conduct of elections for transition to civilian administration. The actualization of Abiola's election victory was not part of the mandate of Shonekon. But before Shonekon could settle into office, General Sane Abacha overthrew him in a palace school and took over the reins of power in Nigeria. He then began his administration and had little or no tolerance to criticism. But staring him in the face was a radio station that was very critical of the activities of the military regimes in Nigeria. The radio station was even more critical of the military regime of Sane Abacha and described the regime as tyrannic, high-handed, draconian, intolerant of criticism and as being the main reason for the non-actualization of Abiola's election victory. Indeed, the radio station was a thorn on the flesh of General Sani Abacha and his regime. The station was launched as Radio Democracy. Its broadcast was worldwide on the frequency of 7125 kHz.41 meter band. It later upgraded its frequency to 6205 kHz.49 meter band. The name of the station was later changed to Radio Freedom. In June 1996, Kudirat was assassinated on the streets of Lagos. Her death sent a root shock across the Federation of Nigeria and beyond. Following her murder, the name of the radio station was changed to Radio Kudirat to immortalize her name. 
Several pro-democracy activists were the brains behind this radio station. They include names like Professor Wolesho Inka, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, Fayeme Kayode, Dele Momodu of Ovation Magazine, and many others. Several other persons contributed money and other resources to the radio station. It is reported that the radio station also enjoyed foreign sponsorship. It is also reported that the frequency was broadcast in all the major languages in Nigeria. In an interview granted on 3rd October 1997 to Ref World, Dele Momodo, the editor-in-chief of Ovation magazine, had this to say about Radio Kudirat. Unquote. Radio Kudirat was first known as Radio Freedom. It was a local pirate radio station operating clandestinely in Nigeria and its local transmitter was unknown. Radio Freedom then changed its name to Radio Democracy. When Mrs. Kudirat Abiola was assassinated on 4th June 1996, the pro-democracy wing of National Democratic Coalition, NADECO, demanded that the radio be changed to Radio Kudirat in honor of the murdered wife of Chief Moshu Dabiola. Radio Kudirat broadcast worldwide on shortwave frequency and can be heard by listeners in North America in the evening. The radio aimed to offer an alternative voice to the Nigerian people and ran programs in Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. And English. The radio station also plays revolutionary music in its mission to encourage Nigerians to resist the military dictatorship. In his interview with Daily Times, a daily newspaper published in Nigeria, Fire Mikayode had this to say about the radio station. Unquote. I have worked actively in the democracy and anti-military dictatorship movement. I helped to found and manage the radio station that was used for that purpose. I was also an official diplomat in the exile movement. I returned to the country in the year 2000. Radio Kudirat was one of the works that we did in exile. The major print media outlets like Punch and Guardian newspapers had been shut down at the time, and so there was no other medium. People were forced to listen to NTA, Radio Nigeria, or Ray Power, which could not do much at the time. It was based on these that we decided to set up a station to let Nigerians know that the spirit of democracy was still alive and that we would not succumb to the intimidation and harassment of the military. Unquote. He went on to say, still unquote, it started with limited and risky coverage as Radio Freedom. We got a short wave station through the instrumentalities of our friends in 1996. We broadcast in about 15 local languages. No station has been able to break that record in Nigeria. Our names were all over, threatening fire and brimstone, saying we were CIA and MI5 agents, not knowing that one of their own, the late Tajuddin Abdul Rahim, was an integral part of us as a Hausa broadcaster. Selfless courage and our conviction for a new and better Nigeria saw us through. We also did a lot of diplomatic work, and I wrote a book on it. The most interesting work we did for me was breaking down the influence of the Abacha administration in Africa in particular. We had successes with the international community, the United Nations, the European Union, and some of the major countries in the world. We got a foot in the door through direct encounters. It was the main pillar of Tajuddin who was the driver of our diplomatic shuttle in our meetings with the Mandelas, the Musevenis, the Nkafas, and many others. The fact that these people were willing 
to meet with us and discuss our agenda for transformation was very significant and it influenced some of the activities they embarked on. The day will come when we will talk about how we used to travel around and which passports we had to use around Africa." Unquote. On how the radio was known, Governor Fayemi stated as follows, unquote. Its first name was Radio Freedom, then Radio Democracy International. It was when Kudira Tabula was killed on June 4, 1996, and we were going to have a commemoration of June 12, the following week, that we felt we needed something to raise the profile of this courageous woman. That's why the name changed." Unquote. In an interview granted in Amsterdam and published in the New York Times of 1st May 1997, Wolesho Inka, Nobel laureate, Nigerian playwright, international scholar, and one of the main proponents of Radio Kudirat had this to say, unquote, the first time that the word treason came up was when we launched the opposition radio, Radio Kudirat. That was in 1996, and it was done outside the country. The Minister of Information then accused us of treason. He said that all those behind the radio are guilty of treason, that the newspapers, the local media, if they quoted anything from the radio, they would equally be guilty of treason." Unquote. Shoinka went on to say, unquote, that radio station is one of the primary activities of the exiled democracy campaigners. Unquote. Millions of Nigerian citizens had become attracted to Radio Kudirat and frequently tuned to obtain first hand information about happenings in Nigeria. It appears that some insiders in government also passed information to agents of Radio Kudirat for broadcast. This is because, in some instances, issues or plans that were classified as strictly confidential were heard as breaking news on Radio Kudirat to the surprise of the military. How the information was passed on to the radio station remained a shocker to the military. Abata was not allowed any moment of rest. The radio station was indeed a thorn on the flesh of its administration. Everything was discussed on Radio Kudirat to the discomfort of Abacha. At some point, there were rumors that the military would soon discover the operational base of the radio station and confiscate its equipment and arrest its broadcasters, agents and sponsors and charge them for treason. In reaction to this, Professor Wolesho Inka at a World Press Conference held at the NUJ Lighthouse, Victoria Island, Lagos, published in the October 21, 1998 edition of PM News, a popular newspaper in Lagos, with the title Sho Inka Task Military on Radio Kudirat, stated as follows, and I quote, The Nigerian military junta will never find Radio Kudirat. The agents of the military who hope to track down the station through its London postal address would be wasting their time." Unquote. Indeed, throughout the lifespan of Radio Kudirat, the Nigerian military junta of that time could not locate Radio Kudirat, despite all efforts in that direction. It appears that after the return of democracy to Nigeria, Radio Kudirat became extinct but its impact had indeed been felt across the length and breadth of Nigeria and across several countries of the world. It is hoped by many that the secrets behind the successful operation of the radio station in defense of full-blown military administration and dictatorship and its usual intolerance will one day be shared with the younger generation of journalists and historians for purpose of holistic documentation an intellectual appraiser. Viewed from whatever angle, Radio Kudir had created indelible impact on the sand of time and contributed immensely to Nigeria's democracy. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel for regular notifications.